Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the University of Newcastle Research Seminar, The Art of and Science of Publishing, Sharing Experiences and Recommendations. I'm uh, Charles Lee, the Program Convener and Senior Lecturer with the University of Newcastle based in Singapore. So welcome again. I'm so excited to see so many of you, hundreds of you, I can see uh, all streaming in live. I wish we are in a uh, an auditorium that I can see you physically, but you know, in this uh, exciting times of pandemic, uh, we have this uh, virtual webinar. I don't see you, but I can uh, feel your presence. So thank you so much for taking off, uh, you know, your busy schedule on a uh, late Friday morning to join us. I understand that they are from the registration list. There are many from uh, Singapore here. Welcome and uh, especially a warm welcome from those in the region, in ASEAN. Yeah, uh, welcome, including our speakers, and uh, also beyond ASEAN. So uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, we do have a very exciting seminar lined up for you with distinguished speakers here. Uh, I hope you enjoy this seminar. Uh, before we start, formally, I'd like to introduce our Pro Vice Chancellor and CEO of University of Newcastle, Singapore, Professor Sally Chan. Professor Sally, uh, to say a few words about our university. Sally, please. Yeah, thank you, Charles. A very really good morning to all of you. On behalf of the University of Newcastle, Singapore, I would like to welcome each and every one of you to this research seminar. I'm so excited to see so many of you here. Uh, it's really an international research seminar. Uh, that means you are all very keen to learn the art and science of publishing. Uh, from our distinguished speakers today. The University of Newcastle is a research intensive university, currently ranked 197th uh, in the world by the QS World Ranking. Uh, the university is ranked uh, as a top eight university in Australia in terms of research performance. Uh, so we are a very uh, world-class university. And University of uh, Newcastle Singapore campus was established since 2006, and we offer a variety of undergraduate and postgraduate programs. Across the year, more than 6,000 students have passed through our doors and graduated from our programs. Uh, they are all making significant contributions to uh, Singapore and also the region. Moving forward, we would like to build your and Singapore as the research hub of the university. Our full-time academics are all conducting impactful and innovative research. The research seminar that we are hosting today is a regular event of the UN Singapore uh, with the goal of building research culture and research collaboration. So I'm really happy to see so many of you are here today. And I would like to thank our distinguished speaker, Dr. Haram Jin and Dr. Yong Siu way for your uh, sort of uh, time and also your generous uh, sharing with us in this uh, research seminar. I would like to thank uh, our adjunct academic Dr. Tan Kim Lee for moderating the session. Thanks to Dr. Charles Lee and Dr. Kavita and our professional staff team for organizing this event and uh, I wish you all an enjoyable and productive seminar. Thank you. Over to you Dr. Tan. Yeah, thank you so much. And I think that um, it is definitely a very um, interesting day for us, uh, as you were to hear from two of our esteemed speakers in sharing their views, perspective, experience on publication. And I think that all of us can relate to this picture real well. All right? And I think that uh, completing a paper to publication is in fact a journey uh, not only is just about you writing well, but you know, you have to satisfy quite a lot of people. And I also think that when it comes to publication, all of us agree that there's a few key common objectives. First, which is to value add to the existing knowledge in the domain. Second, to recognize our contributions. And third, which I think is the most important, is to advance our career. And we know for a fact that researchers that research rather is a competitive profession. Individuals are evaluated based on their publication number, how many times they cited, 
their age indexes and the outlet as well. Of course, you can have your own view on this. And if you want to search through the internet, there will be a diverse openness as well. And it is not uncommon to hear how publication has led to unwanted side effects, such as burnout or even leaving the profession prematurely. In fact, it has become so common that there is an instrument called Publication Pressure Questionnaire being developed. So seeing and hearing from all this, I think the larger picture or the larger question we want to answer is not about how to publish successfully, but more, how can we make this a fun process? What should be our mindset towards it? And that is why today we will answer all these questions. And to help us to do that, we have two esteemed speakers. Let me introduce some of them. Um, Dr. Hiram, I'm sure many of us will know him, is currently the managing editor um, of the Asian Journal of Business Research and an editorial board member of several international journals. His latest inclusion is the Journal of Consumer Behavior. And he has been actively involved um, in several consultancy projects covering marketing, management, tourism. And his papers are all published in top journals, some of which are the Journal of Marketing, um, Tourism Management, and International Journal of Manpower. Some of these are all A-ranked journals. And he has served as a guest editor in several journals, such as the Young Consumer, Journal of Hospitality, and Tourism Research, and European Business Review. So therefore, it is not surprising that he has eight Best Papers Awards, one Young Researcher Award, and one Emerald Literati to his name. Our second speaker is Dr. Yong. So Dr. Yong currently is an academic staff at UCSR University. So her work actually includes pharma, pharmacoeconomics and public health promotion. And Dr. Yong actually works with the youth very actively engaging the ground. And uh, in fact, she has founded and led and leading rather this very good initiative, which is the annual public health campaign since 2002. And because of her close engagement uh, with the community, uh, she is currently the chairperson of RCE Kuching, which is a member of a global network of the United Nations University. So RCE Kuching focuses on promotion sustainable development goals to the local community through the university. And she's also guest editor for journals such as British Food Journal. So Dr. Young will be sharing with us pretty much on her perspective as a guest editor, as well as how to translate research into goals that will actually benefit the community. So I will not want to hold uh, the speakers, so let me introduce Dr. Hiram, to welcome Dr. Hiram to take over the floor. Dr. Hiram, over to you. Thank you so much, <coughs> Mr. Moderator, Dr. Tan, <coughs> for, uh, for the introduction. Uh, thank you, Charles. Thank you, Professor Sally and all the uh, um, organizing team at um, the University of Newcastle, Singapore. Um, so <clears throat> a very good morning to all of you. Um, I'm very happy to be here um, to be sharing with you uh, something which I'm very p passionate about. Um, so let me just share my slides. <clears throat> okay, so this is about the art and science of uh, publishing, um, sharing of experiences and strategies. Now, I, I have uh, roughly 40, 45 minutes to share, and uh, my colleague, um, Associate Professor Dr. Yong, uh, will, will take care of the second part of the sharing. Um, so this is a sharing session, so this is not going to be a lecture. Um, publishing... Uh, involves and encompasses a lot of uh, things. Uh, but I will try my best to uh, share what is important, especially uh, I will share with you about my experience and uh, at the end of my presentation, some recommendations or strategies that you may find useful um, to, to write and publish. Um, first and foremost, again, thank you. Uh, thanks to your UONS for uh, inviting me. Uh, I actually plan to visit the university early this year, uh, but as you know, um, we all could not fly. Uh, 
Um, so uh, I, where, where did I go? I went to uh, Indonesia, uh, transit Singapore back to Sarawak. Um, so I thought uh, this morning, this is, uh, it could be a blessing of disguise, even though, you know, we want the pandemic to be away. Um, I could be able to meet all of you and all the participants on this particular uh, seminar. So once again, my gratitude to uh, UONS for inviting me and Dr. Yong uh, to be with all of you to share what we have been doing, what we are passionate about. Um, a very quick, uh, you know, introduction about myself. Uh, I'm, I'm just like all of you, another ordinary person. Uh, but uh, one thing about me is that I'm constantly curious. I'm curious about many things and, and, and I know what my passion is. And uh, over the years, I, um, I uh, stay true to my passion. I stick to my um, core values. Um, so wherever I go, whatever I do, these are the precepts that I have um, over the years. And that basically explains why um, I'm so much involved in uh, writing and publishing. Um, what Dr. Tan has pointed out earlier um, is true. Um, however, it is less relevant to me. Uh, but again, it, 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 is, uh, it is true uh, because when you write, when you publish, um, it helps you in terms of your uh, promotion. Um, it helps you to fulfill your publication KPI. Uh, which is fine, which is fine. These are all, uh, you know, important aspects of um, publication. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm more driven by curiosity. I'm more driven by passion. Um, my curiosity to learn to know something more. My passion to do something uh, to, to, to at least contribute my little effort uh, to make a positive impact on the academic uh, community uh, or the practitioner world. So um, again, this has been uh, my precepts, as I said, for, for, for some years. Um, there are two quotes which I really like. Um, number one, try not to become a man of success, but rather try to become a man of uh, value. I'm not sure whether it is really from Albert Einstein. Uh, I, uh, uh, Google tells me so, so I just, you know, copy and paste. Um, you might wonder what's the difference between success and value. Uh, I'm not going to dwell into all this. Um, but for me personally, uh, when, when I achieve something, I want this achievement to be shared. I want this achievement to be uh, transmit, transmittable. Uh, it is not something that I do alone, I achieve alone, I become the sole champion. Um, I, I, uh, I don't find satisfaction in doing all this. Whatever I do, I find uh, greater joy in sharing with others, um, especially my students, if they can do what I have been doing, if they can do better than what I did. Um, I think that would be a more rewarding uh, thing. So that's my definition of uh, becoming a man of value. And I hope this particular seminar is not just about teaching you how to write. In fact, I won't be teaching you how to write. I'm not really a, I'm not really a publication expert. Uh, I'm just you know, a person who likes to write, who likes to uh, uh, publish. And, and, and I find ways um, to help more people to do the same. Uh, yes, publication, publishing is challenging, uh, but at the same time, it is fun. It is a rewarding process. It is a process where we can actually uh, pass on knowledge and skills to others so that they can do the same. Okay? It is not something that uh, an elite group can achieve, no. Uh, you, you will see later in my, in my sharing that uh, failures are part of the process. Uh, and I've, I don't know, if, if I have to come up with a CV of failures, uh, that CV will be, will, will be a lot uh, longer uh, because it's just part of the process. Um, so again, 
that curiosity, that passion, that happiness to share uh, what you achieve with others. These are the things that drive me to keep writing, uh, learning, publishing, and as you will see later, working with others to publish. Okay, nothing wrong with co-authorship. Uh, if you co-author a paper, that is perfectly fine. But again, as far as I'm concerned, I, I find greater joy in working with others. Uh, it's not that I cannot write paper alone. It's just that, you know, why not do something that makes you happier? And, uh, and, 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 and why not do something that you can, you can create value uh, for others at the same time? Anyway, so this is who I am what I've been doing. Uh, to give you some perspective, uh, uh, for the last seven months, uh, this 20 plus papers uh, have been published. Uh, so so uh, I, I need to make it clear at the outset that if I were to do this alone, it would never be possible. It would never, never be possible. It is no shame to admit that I could not do it alone I could not have done it alone. Um, again, uh, I hope my sharing will inspire you uh, to do, uh, to employ certain strategies, uh, not only for you to write more, to publish more, uh, but also, and more importantly, to make your writing and publishing process more satisfying, more rewarding. Okay. Um, these are the special issues that I have been uh, uh, addicting over the last two years. Uh, of course, many of these special issues are, are close, um, but there are a few ongoing. Uh, again, uh, on one hand, I want to prove to myself that I can edit um, special issue from um, good journals. On the other hand, I find this uh, you know, as another avenue uh, to help fellow researchers in Malaysia, in this region, um, to write and to publish their papers in, in top journals, in good journals. Um, even though paper quality uh, is always the number one criterion, uh, something which I will discuss later, there will always be other factors. There will always be other factors. Now, if I may tell you the truth, as an editor myself, when I see a paper uh, submitted to my journal, no matter how good the paper is, uh, the first impression of the paper may affect my decision. For example, if I read the title, and on the title, there is already a grammatical mistake. No matter how interesting that paper is, that impression <laughs> may affect the outcome. Like, you know. Um, editor reviewers do not have, they are as equally, they are as busy as, as all the authors. Um, so if I can only publish 10 papers for this particular issue, but I receive 30 papers. So can you imagine, I have to reject 20 papers and, 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 and uh, rejection of this paper does not mean that these papers are, are no good. It's just that when they are compared with the other 10 papers, you know, these 20 papers are not good enough. So there are factors why certain papers are rejected uh, in addition to uh, the quality, the relevance of the paper. Uh, now, uh, just very briefly, again, these special issues are arranged. There will be more to come. Uh, one of the reasons is to help researchers in this region uh, to, to write, to publish, and to be able to penetrate these journals. Um, so this is something that we hope we can create value uh, to help one another. Anyway, so uh, there will be more to come. All right, so uh, these are the special issues which are still ongoing, okay? So this is a special issue for, from Journal of Consumer Behavior where I, uh, uh, guests uh, I did with my colleagues from uh, Malaysia and Australia. Another special issue, um, International Journal of Culture, Tourism, Hospitality and Research. 
uh, another project which uh, I'm involved with my colleagues from uh, Malaysia, United States, and Taiwan. Okay, so if you have any papers uh, related to uh, the theme of this special issue, you are welcome to submit. All right, this is another special issue Journal of Hospitality and Tourism Technology. Another special issue I uh, guest edit with my colleagues in again Malaysia and uh, Taiwan. Um, and the last special issue, I will leave it to uh, Dr. Yong uh, to explain. This is a very interesting special issue where we highlight uh, the convergence, the integration of knowledge and practice. Uh, and I, and, and, and I, uh, I really like uh, this special issue to, be, uh, to, uh, to attract uh, papers uh, to not only disseminate knowledge um, about uh, the future of food, but also um, the practical side of how to ensure uh, responsible production, acquisition, consumption, disposition of food. Um, and, and, that, and, and, and this is the, the reason why uh, I'm currently very much involved in uh, Emerald. Uh, as you can see, uh, I'm using Emerald slides uh, because um, on one hand, when we publish, as I said earlier, we, we, uh, you know, we do it for academic purpose. Uh, and one of the things that we look at is uh, whether the journal is indexed in SSCI, Scopus, and we look into impact factor. Uh, for example, for JHTT, the impact factor is 2.7. Uh, for BFJ, um, the second special issue on the screen, the impact factor is 2.1. Now, no doubt these impact factors are important. Uh, but at the same time, uh, what I like about MRO publishing and what I like about this particular special issue is that we want to make sure this uh, project also generates real impact. What it means is, the, the knowledge that we try to disseminate, the research that we, that we do, they, they make a positive impact on the community in a practical way. Um, Dr. Yong is very much into this. Uh, I, I think she will introduce herself more later, but, but by the way, uh, she's also the chairperson of uh, Regional Center of Expertise in Education for Sustainable Development. So this is something that we uh, we are doing now to combine knowledge and practice together uh, so that whatever we do, uh, it is not only good for publication, it is not only good for citation, it is not only good for um, accumulating impact factors, it is also good for generating real impact on the community we are serving, on the uh, community we are living in. So uh, again, Dr. Yeung will uh, speak more about it later. Now. As I said, uh, this is going to be a sharing session. Uh, for the last few months, I have been, um, you know, giving um, talks about publication uh, in different places. And, and, and uh, even though I can't see the participants, but uh, uh, I'm quite sure my, uh, my friends from um, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Taiwan, Hong Kong, India, they, they might be on the platform. Uh, so you might be hearing all this, um, but again, uh, as I said in a few occasions, uh, in this particular sharing session, it will be the same. And that is, I will not be able to teach you how to write. I will not be able to teach you how to publish. On one hand, I'm not really a publication expert. On the other hand, given the time constraint, we don't really have enough, uh, we don't really have the luxury to go into all the details, but uh, at the end of my sharing, and also the sharing of uh, Dr. Yong, if we could inspire you to write, to publish, uh, and if we could inspire you, motivate you to overcome challenges, to overcome setbacks, failures that you might have, uh, and see the, the rewarding side, the satisfying side of writing and publishing. And as a result, as a result you start writing as a result, you start publishing. If that is the case, I will consider this seminar a success and I will get myself uh, a good meal later uh, to celebrate. Anyway, uh, so, so um, let's 
come to uh, uh, the, the topic um, today. When we talk about uh, the art and science of uh, publishing, it is actually both. Uh, like I said earlier, curiosity plays a big role in my writing and uh, publishing process. Uh, I don't know how many of you have uh, watched Alice in, in Wonderland before, but there is a term, uh, it sounds strange in English, but uh, it makes a lot of sense in reality. And that is curioser, curioser and curioser. When we were young, we, we were curious about so many things. As we grow older, are we become less and less curious? Or are we becoming more and more curious? As a researcher, uh, it doesn't matter where, if you are in pure science, applied science, medical science, natural science, and also social science. Yes, it is a scientific process. Research is a scientific process. Publishing is a scientific process. There are things, there are things you are, there are many things you have to do in a scientific way, in a systematic manner uh, to ensure it is a scholarly work, something which people can build on uh, to make further contribution. So that scientific process is, is something that we cannot compromise. Uh, however, when it comes to writing and publishing, it is also an art. It is also an art. Um, your curiosity, your observation, the way you tell story, all this, uh, all this require the artistic aspect of, uh, of any scientist, all right? So again, uh, are we becoming more and more curious? Uh, you know, even this seminar itself, I can, I can see a few interesting research topics. You know, through observation, there are things that you can, you can, you can do. Now again, I'm not Albert Einstein. I don't assume to be one, uh, but I like this quote. Okay, after a certain high level of technical skill is achieved, science and art tend to come together, coalesce, and in aesthetics, plasticity, and form. Especially the last sentence, the greatest scientists are always artists as well. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, my friend, uh, uh, this, this will be my opening word, why publishing is both uh, science and art. Uh, on one hand, the process must be rigorous. Uh, there, is, uh, there is, you know, the results must be robust. Um, the process must be systematic. It must be a scholarly work. Um, and therefore, quality cannot be compromised. Uh, bias, errors can happen anytime. How can we minimize? How can we mitigate? How can we ensure our results are valid? This scientific process, you know, it is a must. At the same time, the writing, the publishing, uh, thinking outside the box, uh, the way you tell story, the way you craft, you justify, you argue, how you position your paper, how you tell the story that your audience can understand. Who are your target audience? Who are your readers? How do you retain your voice while you acknowledge uh, works by, by, uh, by uh, previous researchers? All these require the artistic aspect of the researchers. Okay, now, uh, I, as I said, I don't really have time to, uh, to go through all this, but my point he here is every paper has its story. The, it is a journey uh, and it involves both the uh, scientific and the artistic aspect. Um, so the first paper, it actually came from a consultancy project. The second paper, it came about through observation. The third paper, it was initiated by interest and passion. Not really because I read, I read a lot, I knew a lot, no. It came about because of interest, because of passion. Then slowly reading came in, uh, knowledge came in, uh, research components came in. But at the, very or, you know, at the very beginning, the origin was actually interest and passion. The third paper, this paper is actually based on a student's work. And mind you, he is not a postgraduate student. He is 
he was an undergraduate student. So again, how do you work with your students in order to come up with uh, publishable, publishable papers? Uh, the fifth paper is all about teamwork, uh, something which I will share uh, later uh, in uh, greater detail. Um, again, uh, I mean, if, if, if you need my slides, I don't really know whether my slides are useful because uh, my slides are pictures everywhere. Uh, and I thought it would be better to, uh, to, uh, to deliver my presentation uh, uh, for this particular seminar. Now, these, there are nine pictures. These are some of the ideas, uh, sorry, some of, the, uh, some of my experiences where the ideas uh, came from, okay? Uh, it came from ob observation. For example, I was served with this plate of food. Obviously, I could not finish. So I became curious, when a person cannot finish food, what would he, what would he do with it? Uh, would I leave it there? Would I tapau, you know, take away? Uh, would I, you know, force my, uh, force, you know, the younger people on the table to finish the food? You know, younger people, you should eat more. Actually, I cannot finish. Uh, but to, uh, to, uh, to appease my guilt, uh, I, I, I asked my, uh, asked the younger ones to finish uh, everything on the table. You know, uh, uh, my, my parents used to like to tell us when we were young, uh, again, uh, nothing wrong uh, with it. Please don't take it personally. It is just a discussion. You know, they told me about certain people living in certain places. They were so poor. They had no food to eat. Uh, so you are so lucky, you know. So whatever. So because of this, I become curious. Uh, what would we do today if we cannot finish food on table? Can you see? Your idea comes from your daily experience, from your observation. Now, apart from that, I like to attend, uh, you know, practitioners, events. Uh, I like to meet experts. I like to talk to journal editors. Uh, I join conference selectively i don't join every conference um i don't join conference because i want to publish because you can always submit your paper to to the journal directly so 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 the main reason for me to attend conference is to network is to know people uh, is to get feedback comments from uh, about my paper um so it's, it's it's where you get more and more ideas um you you can travel obviously we can't do that at the moment but when you travel, you, you know, you get ideas, you get uh, opinions, different perspectives about certain topic. Uh, I like to work with my students. Uh, I have a lot of discussion with them uh, because even during discussion, even as a lecturer, you will also gain something. You will learn something. You will see something differently. All right. And obviously you can't run away from reading. You have to read a lot in order to get more and more ideas. Now, this would be the first thing I would like to talk about um, because when it comes to writing and publishing, many times the first hindrance would be idea. Where does idea come from? Uh, how can I make my idea interesting? How can I position my paper in such a way that my idea um, is interesting? Uh, and it is something that the editors, the reviewers, the readers will find interesting as well. Okay. Um, oops. Sorry. All right. Now, um, this is just a paper telling you uh, how, you know, the process is. Um, I, I, this is nothing new to you, and that is, you are, you are, I mean, we have been seeing people, we have seen people uh, taking selfie uh, of themselves with food. Um, and, and, and because of that, it, uh, it, I became curious. When, when a person took a selfie with their food and when they posted that picture on uh, Facebook, for example, uh, how, what, I mean, how much, does it affect uh, your friend's intention to have the same food, to visit the same restaurant, okay? Um, so if you, look at, uh, if you look at Facebook, there are many groups on um, food. You see people taking selfie, and if you look at the message, um, if you look at the comments, you know, where this is, 
uh, in uh, in Hokkien. Why Bojo? Bojo meaning why did you not invite me? You know where is this? It looks nice. Should we go again? When I when I saw these comments, I began to think. Now we have been using uh, celebrity to endorse certain things, and 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 we pay thousands, millions of dollars, ringgit, you know, to get them to endorse our products. Now we have this phenomenon. People are taking selfie with food. We don't have to pay them. They, they do it voluntarily and they share online. And after one day, two days, three days, thousands, you know, if not, I don't know, maybe thousands, hundreds, thousands of people would have seen and they, and they commented on, on, on that particular food. So that makes me wonder, makes me curious, does celebrity endorsement or does selfie promotion have the same effect when it is compared to another way uh, of promotion? All right, so that's why we uh, came up with this paper, the effect of selfie promotion and celebrity endorse advertisement on decision-making process. The context is restaurant. Is, is restaurant, all right? Um, now, this is just one example how idea, observation uh, led to reading, uh, teamwork, writing, uh, publishing. Uh, this paper went through, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, six or seven rounds of revision, okay? Uh, as I said earlier, as Dr. Tan pointed out, pointed out earlier, yes, it was challenging. It is a challenging process. Uh, again, it's about what motivates you, what drives you to, to persist, to persevere, uh, and to see it through. So we, we are glad that this paper was eventually accepted for publication. Uh, on one hand, yes, it is something we would like to share knowledge with others. Uh, but the authors, we know how much we went through and, uh, you know, in the process. And, and because of that, we really, really treasure every piece. Every paper is a masterpiece for us. Um, and, and, and that's why it keeps us going. Um, this is another paper. Uh, I uh, do not want to go into details, but basically it is about Sarawak. Uh, whenever I, uh, you know, talk to international audience, I would always like to uh, spend uh, half, you know, 30 seconds or one minute to promote Sarawak. Uh, this is a paper I purposely did. On one hand, it is about knowledge. On the other hand, it is about promoting Sarawak. Uh, so the hidden agenda behind this paper is actually to promote Sarawak. Uh, yes, we know about Malay food. Yes, we know about Chinese food. Uh, Singaporeans, uh, like to visit Sarawak for food. Uh, um, you know, uh, we know all this. But how many people actually know about Dayak food? Uh, one of the uh, ethnic foods in, uh, in Sarawak. So again, on one hand, it is about disseminating knowledge. On the other hand, from the practical side, I hope as an academic, I can do something to to increase awareness, to generate interest of readers uh, towards Sarawak, and in this particular case, towards an ethnic food in Sarawak. Whether I succeed or not, I don't know, but uh, that's all I'm going to say about Sarawak for the time being. Um, now, as I said earlier, this is a process. Uh, failures will happen. Uh, a few weeks ago, I gave another talk about, pub I mean, another talk on publication. And the topic is when failure is an option from the editor, reviewer, and author's uh, perspective. Now, the paper, all the papers which I wrote, which I published, all these papers are different in many ways. Different context, different story, uh, different motive. Uh, they are written, they were written at different times, but they have something in common, and that is failures are part of the process. Okay, rejection, uh, revision, uh, uh, you know, things did not turn up uh, to be something expected. Um, and that's why I would like to encourage all of you uh, 
uh, that, that failures are part of the process. Uh, I, have, I have that picture, an iron lady in Pakistan. Uh, that is why failure is an option, uh, but giving up is not. All right. So, again, uh, the paper, yes, on one hand, it is about, it is about the, uh, the research topic that you want to do. It is about a specific research problem that you want to address. Uh, but at the same time, the paper is more about you. It is your journey. It is something that you go through, how you draft, how you craft, how you go through the process. Eventually, um, when the paper is accepted for publication, it is an achievement. Okay. So how did you pick yourself up? How did you turn things around? How do you want to write your own story? The very first paper when I, uh, that I submitted uh, some years ago, um, uh, my supervisor told me, you know, submit to any journal index in SSCI. At that time, I, I did not really know what SSCI was, but I submitted nevertheless. That paper was rejected seven times. It was submitted to the first journal, rejected. Second journal, rejected. Third journal, rejected. It was rejected seven times. At the end of the day, I, you know, I decided to just submit to an ordinary journal so that I can receive their email. Congratulations, your paper is accepted. At least I can comfort myself, you know. So it all began with a lot of failures. Uh, and in the process, as you aim higher, failures are bound to happen. Um, so another interesting article by Anna, failing your way to success. Just, you know, take it to, to your chin, accept it, uh, and failing your way to, to success. Why failure is a crucial ingredient for success. And through failures, you learn a lot of things. And, I will, and I'm going to share with you uh, some of the things I learned in the process. Now, the, the next few slides, I will not go into, I'm not going to spend much time, but again, if you need the slides, uh, I can send over to, um, to the university, to the organizer, you can have it. So these are some of the things you can read, why we publish, why publication is important, especially the first one. You don't really understand what you have discovered until you write it up. And also, you don't really understand, you don't really know how much you understand until your paper is reviewed by International Academic Committee. You might think your research is the best. Your colleagues might approve. And if you send to any local journal, you know, after three days, after one week, after two weeks, you will receive an email. Congratulations, your paper is published. Okay, nothing wrong, especially when you need to build your confidence at the early stage. But as you progress, you will have to try something higher. And, and, I, and I can tell you, um, I receive rejection letters uh, from time to time. Whenever I receive email from the journal, I always tell myself, uh, I'm not being pessimistic, but I just tell myself as a fact that 70% uh, that email is about rejection. Okay, uh, I accept it. I accept it as a part of, of the process uh, because I want to know whether my work is approved by international reviewers. Uh, those whom I don't know, I don't know who they are. They are. Their background might be different, even though they are in that particular area of you know, expertise, but we want to learn from them, all right? So again, there are many reasons why publication is important. I cannot tell you, I cannot tell you how important it is. You have to start early. Like if you are young, start young. If you are older, start early, okay? Depending on how you want to uh, oper operationalize uh, the word early. But the point is, start early. How early, okay? How early? My answer is start today, okay? Start something today. If not, you will not begin. You will not begin, all right? Another interesting article you can read up, why academicians don't write, all right? I, I better don't uh, say too much. Uh, I, I might uh, <laughs> upset a lot of academicians. But again, if you read this article, if you reflect your own experience, many times, uh, our excuses, 
uh, of not writing are not valid because those who write, uh, according to this study, are as busy as those who say they have no time to write. I rest my case. All right. Um, the next article, why academics don't write. Okay. Early experience. Why? Because they felt before. And that trauma, that feeling, uh, that phobia uh, stopped them from writing and from publishing. Okay. So this article tells us how we identify uh, these blocks and how we can, how we can overcome uh, these challenges. Again, we can become, uh, we can continue writing and publishing. Again, uh, I cannot go into detail, but um, these are articles for you to look into. Predicting publication success, again, um, starting early is, 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 is one of them. Um, and I would like to point out number four. I would like to point out number four. We found a surprisingly weak role for university prestige once the effects of other predictors were accounted for statistically. Now, if you are in Oxford University, Harvard University, University of Newcastle, you know, all these top universities, yes, wonderful. You have all the resources um, you need to, to publish. But I would like to tell all of you that this study shows that being in a prestigious un university does not necessarily Sorry, let me put it in another way. Being in other universities does not mean that you cannot publish, okay? Once you put your effort in, once you do what you should do as a researcher, as, as an author, um, you are determined, you start early, you know, you can be equally successful. You can be equally successful, okay? So, so yes, you know, it's a privilege to be in good universities, but don't be disappointed uh, if you are not, because publication success does not depend on uh, the prestige of the university. All right. Okay, another point, which I don't want to, uh, you know, go into detail. The environment is very important. Writing and publishing requires environment. Either the environment is good or let me add this point, you have to create the environment. Okay, sometimes we blame, you know, we point fingers. We are not in a privileged position. Uh, we don't have a good environment. Yes, this may be the case, all right? We hope we, we are given a good environment, uh, but sometimes we are not afforded uh, that sort of environment. Uh, my experience tells me it is possible for you to create the environment yourself, okay, so that you can, you have that momentum, you know, to, to continue write and publish. Okay, uh, very quickly, these are, these are a few things I would like, I would like to share with you. Um, uh, why, you know, failures are part of the process and why this process is, is, is in fact a rewarding process. Now, this is the email we like to receive. It is a pleasure to accept your manuscript. That's good, all right? But I would like to show you this one. I write you in regards to manuscript, blah, blah, blah. The moment you read these few words, you know your paper is gone. Okay, this will be another rejection uh, paper. Okay, again, accept it. This is part of the process. Uh, one time I submitted a paper to a journal. I received this. Uh, this paper was reviewed by five reviewers. Major, 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 reject, reject. Okay. Uh, uh, and the editors decided to invite us to resubmit, okay? So we revised, we resubmitted, eventually this paper was accepted for publication, okay? Challenge, yes. You know, struggling, yes. Failures, yes. But at the same time, if you have the determination, if you are driven, if you are motivated, to learn, to write, uh, to address reviewers' comments, to learn from their comments, to improve, their pa to improve your paper accordingly. Eventually, uh, you can still, you know, get it, see it through, right? So this paper eventually was accepted for publication. Another one, 
uh, I su we submitted to a journal. Uh, this paper uh, was reviewed by uh, four reviewers, major, reject, reject, reject. And when we look at uh, their comments, 3,200 words. And the editorial decision, reject. So, so what did I do? When I received this email, I decided to put it aside. Don't read the comments. Because if you read the comments at that time, you will read it with vengeance, with frustration. Okay, you may start complaining. Who is this reviewer? You know, he doesn't understand what I'm doing, what rubbish he or she is, or whatever. So I decided to put it aside. Why? Because I need a few days to tell myself this paper is gone. Um, accept it. Let that feeling sink in. Um, so after two or three days, when I return to the email, when I open the email, I read with the attitude to learn. I know that this journal has already rejected my paper. Don't read with vengeance. Don't read with frustration. Read with the attitude to learn. And, and true enough, as I read, even though there were comments which were unfairly written, there, are, there were many, many good comments. Okay, Eventually, we, we wrote the paper, that paper was published elsewhere. And for this journal, we submitted another paper. And because of that learning process, we could submit something better. Eventually, that paper was also accepted for publication by that particular journal. Okay, so can you see the scientific process? But at the same time, it, 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 there are things that you have to do differently. Okay. Uh, so for me, I decided to not read the comments uh, at that particular time. Walk away, do something else, okay? Accept the fact that this paper is already rejected. Then when you come back, read with the attitude to learn. Now, recently we have another experience. This paper, uh, another recent experience, was reviewed by three reviewers. First round of review, there were 92 comments, roughly 6,000 words. Second round, of, second round of review, there were 89 comments, 5,565 five, uh, 5, words. When we submitted our revised manuscript with the response sheet, total word count, 15,768 words. Okay, so so you can imagine uh, you know, the process that we went through. Uh, but let me share with you the good news. Let me share with you the good news. The paper was eventually accepted for publication. Okay? We would have given up. We could have told ourselves, why, why bother? Why not we just withdraw and we submit to any other journal? You know, it would have been easy. Uh, we, would, we, we would not have gone through all this... Uh, you know, situation. Uh, but again, the attitude to learn, to address the comments, uh, to, to, you know, we want to know whether our revision satisfy reviewers' comments, okay? Instead of avoiding them, instead of, you know, you know running away from them, we want, to, we want to respond and see if our response satisfy their comments. If they are happy, this will be a great approval of our learning. And for, for us, that is a, a more rewarding and satisfying thing to do. Okay. Um, okay. I, uh, I, need to, I need to hurry up uh, because uh, I need to, uh, Dr. Yong will have to share her portion as well. Now, what, is, what are the keys to publishing? Writing and write today. That's it. Okay. If you ask me, uh, what, what is the secret to writing? There's only one secret and that is you have to write. Uh, but again, like I said today, we can't really, you know, discuss much about writing. Uh, but I have to emphasize here that uh, when it comes to writing and publishing, if you don't write, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. But if you write, then I hope my sharing will be useful to you because uh, I will recommend a few things. Uh, I will share a few strategies which you can, you can, you know, refer to. Uh, hopefully that will make your writing and publishing more rewarding. Again, these are the things you can go through uh, later. 
this is just another thing, uh, another slide showing why writing today, writing now is important. Okay, this is the slide I added last night. Again, um, there are many, many things to discuss about. Uh, I put it on the slide in case you need the slide. This could be useful for you, um, you know, to consider how you can improve your writing and, and publishing. All right. Uh, there, are, there are a lot to tell you about writing. Now, these are the things that you need to, uh, to be, you know, again, something you, you learn, something you, you can consider in, in, in your writing and publishing process. What I, I would like to share with you in the last few minutes is, is the box uh, in the middle, knowing the editors and their journals. Volunteer as a constructive reviewer, build your network and work as a team, work with your students and talk to and work with practitioners. Okay, the, the box on the left, this is about writing. Uh, and, and therefore I can't really, you know, this is not the, the focus of the seminar uh, today. We will need another seminar, another workshop to go through all this. So first and foremost, you have to write. Writing is what matters uh, primarily. So, so I, I don't want to, uh, you know, give you a false impression that uh, it's only about strategy. It's not about writing. No, it is still about writing. Uh, but if you write, then strategies will come into play. All right. So these are the five strategies that you can consider. Uh, again, I will only talk about two, uh, two strategies. Okay. So I will not talk about the first one, okay? I will talk about the second one uh, to give you some idea how it works. Volunteer as a reviewer. Now, it's, it's, it's a good thing to write to the editor uh, of the journal which you want to target and tell him or her that you would like to nominate, you would like to, you would like to volunteer yourself as a reviewer. No harm to try. The editor may say no, but normally editors like consistent reviewers. They like reviewers who perform consistently. They like reviewers who can provide constructive comments. You will not be the only reviewer anyway. Every paper will be sent to multiple reviewers. They always want a reviewer at least who is consistent, who, deliv who, deliver, who delivers things on time, and, and he or she provides constructive comments rather than just, you know, not enough, read more, this is wrong, uh, you should do this and that. It's more than that, all right? So, so let me tell you uh, very briefly my journey with this journal called British Food Journal. So I volunteered myself uh, as an ad hoc reviewer uh, to the editor-in-chief. The editor-in-chief at that time was Professor Christopher Griffith. Uh, he's in the picture, okay, the white man uh, on the first picture. So, uh, so I reviewed a few papers uh, for B British Food Journal. After some time, I submitted a paper. Then later on, another paper. So I evolved to become an author. Uh, after reviewing a few papers, after publishing two papers with British Food Journal, I asked the editor-in-chief, would it be possible for me to be appointed as an editorial board member? His reply is typical. He told me, we will need to assess your performance. Uh, one year, two years, then we will discuss, uh, then only we will you know, appoint you as an editorial board member, if appropriate, if qualified. Um, okay, I accept that better than nothing. At least he entertained me. After three months, after reviewing another paper, to my surprise, he appointed me as an editorial board member. So that paper, I believe was a test uh, for him to see whether I do it for passion or I do it just for title, just for namesake. All right. So, so uh, I was appointed. I'm still an editorial board member of this particular journal. Then I move forward. I proposed to him, can I arrange a special issue? All right. Again, to cut the story short, uh, he agreed. So I had the first special issue with British Food Journal in, 20, in 2018. This is where, you know, you create value, not only for yourself, for, but for other researchers, especially the, 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 the novice researchers, 
the emerging researchers, uh, you know, you can guide them, you can uh, help them to publish papers in your special issue uh, with British Food Journal. On one hand, you don't compromise the quality. On the other hand, you provide more guidance so that their papers will not be rejected prematurely. Okay, you give chance to them to revise, to improve. Okay, so the onus is on them to revise, to improve. As far as I'm concerned, the editors are concerned, we give opportunities so that they can work on it to make it better and better. All right, so eventually I invited him to Sarawak to be a speaker. We became, we become good friends. Uh, and then we arranged another special issue. This is where Dr. Yong is involved. And again, I'm very excited about it because it is a step forward. Now it is no longer just, you know, a special issue for academics. It is also a special issue for practitioners. We combine these two worlds together and we hope this special issue will not only create impact factor for academics, it will also create real impact on the community. My friends, can you see the process? Okay, a lot of failures, no doubt, but no harm to try. And as you move along um, with determination, with passion, with, with, with the goal to create greater value to others, you will, you will see it through. And it all began with a simple gesture. And that is, I wrote an email to the editor, Professor Chris, I, I would like to volunteer myself as a reviewer. Uh, if you think I'm, you know, this is my CV. Uh, if you think appro if, if, if appropriate, I'm more than happy to review uh, the paper that you sent to me. That's it, okay? Um, it only took two years, less than two years to achieve all this in the process, all right? So this is the story, um, all right. This is another, another thing, build your network. Um, uh, and all these papers I, I wrote, like I said at the very beginning, I wrote, I did it together with my colleagues, with my research fellows, okay? So I would like to acknowledge all of them as well. In fact, more, there are many more. Um, so again, this is a process where you network uh, with others, you work together with others, you build friendship, and you write and publish together. All right, so these are some of the papers uh, we wrote together and published. Uh, this is just another, another journey we went through, uh, how we do things together uh, and, uh, and, and to make our publication journey a more rewarding, a more uh, satisfying one. Uh, Dr. Tang is the moderator, so I feel obliged uh, to, uh, to just acknowledge him a little bit. Uh, you know, I met him, I think two, two years ago, uh, but since then, uh, you know, the rest is history. We worked together and recently we had a paper published uh, as joint authors, uh, Does It Matter Way to Run? Intention to Participate in Destination Marathon. We collected data from Singapore uh, to know their intention to participate in marathon in Kuching. This is how these two regions uh, become involved. All right, so why not work together? I believe my friend Brian is on the platform as well. He presented our paper in Taiwan. As a result, because of his presentation, we won a best paper award. I was not in Taiwan, but again, can you see how much value it can create uh, to learn things together, to do things together, all right? Okay, this is just another paper showing how a consultancy report can be turned into a publishable paper. Now, this, this guy, uh, Professor Robert Pamati, is a big name in marketing. Uh, so I like this article a lot because this article, in this article, he, you know, he advocates for uh, collaboration uh, with uh, business practice, uh, and that will make our paper more relevant to the real world. Okay, uh, I think that's about uh, about it. Again, this is another paper which I purposely wrote to promote Sarawak, uh, and and this paper is accepted for publication. Uh, was accepted for publication uh, in uh, tourism management. Uh, uh, in terms of impact factor, it is currently uh, the top one spot. Uh, but again, the purpose behind is to use this paper to promote Sarawak to international audience. Okay, so this is something that we do. I like to do with my colleagues. 
All right, to wrap it up, uh, to wrap up the whole thing, uh, writing and publishing requires continual learning and practice, and, and you have to start today. Uh, you can start small, but you, you definitely have to start early. Being critical to your own work and seeking improvement uh, is how you become better and better over time. Failures and mistakes are part of the process, okay? But it helps you to learn things that you would have not otherwise learned. Um, so if you look at failures and perspectives, uh, I mean, failures and mistakes from that angle, uh, you will be, you know, determined, you will be able to pick up yourself easily and you will just move on, uh, you know, continue with your passion uh, in writing and publishing. Being open to others with right attitude, okay? I should have also highlighted right attitude. And working with others will sustain your writing and publishing. Uh, I'm grateful to my uh, colleagues, my, my research fellows. Some of them might be on the platform today because we do things together. Uh, if, if, it would, if it wasn't for them, you know, I would not have learned uh, so much as well. Finally, finding the fun in your publishing journey. Uh, writing and publishing is not supposed to be easy. Okay? It is not supposed to be easy. Challenging, yes, but it has to be something rewarding. All right. Um, these are some of the events I will encourage you to join. Again, I will pass the slides to, uh, to the host. Uh, if you like the slides, um, you can have a copy. But I think I will remove uh, some pictures because they are not really relevant. Uh, these are more for my storytelling. Thank you so much um, for the time. I hope um, my sharing, uh, even though incomplete, uh, uh, is useful uh, to your writing and publishing endeavor. Back to you, Dr. Tan. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hiram. I think uh, we have really learned so much from him, uh, from his sharing for the past hour or so. Uh, he really shared us with really good tips on what we should be looking out for and how to maintain the passion. And thank you very much for all the questions that's coming in. It's really coming fast and furious. Keep them coming. But now I think it's only right for me to invite Dr. Yong. So Dr. Yong is very um, engaged in the ground in the community, uh, especially on efforts. Uh, with regards on sustainable development goals. So let me welcome her to hear her perspective and her insight on how to uh, publish uh, in such an environment. So Dr. Yong, over to you. Uh, Dr. Yong, you need to unmute. <laughs> okay. okay. There you go. Okay. So uh, good morning to all. Uh, thank you to Dr. Tan uh, and also Dr. Hiram, Charles and uh, Professor Sally um, uh, for this opportunity to share with participants uh, from the viewpoint as a guest editor. I think Dr. Hiram just now has mentioned quite a lot of things. Uh, it's very inspirational, I think, especially to the younger researcher and also I think to the mid-level researcher. Uh, just uh, inspire me to also maybe share a bit of my uh, story. I started my academic career after returning from U.S. Uh, after my Bachelor of Pharmacy degree uh, over in U.S. I came back and um, you know, I started work in a hospital, in a private hospital, but I didn't felt that satisfaction um, because at that time, the pharmacy practice in Malaysia is still about just counting pills. Yeah? Day in, day out, you go in, count pills. So I feel that that's not my, what my education is for. So then I applied to go into uh, academic line, started my career. Then two years into academic line, uh, UCSI University uh, management uh, owner approached me and said that they wanted to start a, pharmacy, a new pharmacy degree in, in, in UCSI. At that time, they were called Sadaya College. And uh, at that time, I was thinking, should I be taking up this opportunity into management or should I continue with academic? At that time, I have chosen, obviously, uh, to go into uh, management. I chose, I taken up the challenge to start a new school uh, with a college, a Sataya College at that time. And uh, I have much fun. I have now been 20 years with UCSI University. I'm the founder of the Bachelor of Pharmacy degree, Master of Clinical Pharmacy, their PhD programs and so on, uh, with the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences. 
So 20 years in management is quite a lot. And uh, I, I do feel guilty when Dr. Hiram said, well, you, you cannot use the excuse to say you are busy. That's why you are not publishing. So in my this uh, 20 years, uh, I have uh, been having opportunity to publish something that I wanted to. And, uh, and as Dr. Hiram said, collaboration and working with others are very important. Uh, and, and so on. Yeah. And the other passion I have, the second year I started the pharmacy school here is to work with my young students because in the profession of pharmacy, we know that uh, we need to go out there and uh, talk to people. That's what our profession is about, to help people in their medicine, to talk to people, to communicate with people so that they understand what their medicine is about. They, uh, and they take it appropriately. Yeah. So because of that, uh, I started the public health campaign, which is an annual event now, uh, and it has lasted for this year will be uh, 17 years that we are doing it. We started with zero capital. Uh, we will get donation and we ask for um, uh, uh, donation from companies to support the event, to give free blood tests to the public. Every year we give about a thousand free blood glucose tests to the public with the fingerprint tip, uh, uh, fingerprint uh, test and so on. Uh, so, and on the other hand, my pharmacy students, they learn. They learn the technique of talking to people, to educate people, to make awareness of, of uh, medicine. So that's why it uh, inspired me to continue to work with young people to youth. And at the moment, I am the chairperson of uh, RCE Kuching. Um, I just like to share my screen um, now so that um, I can. Um, okay, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so um, so I'm at, at the moment chairperson of uh, RCE uh, Kuching. So in RCE Kuching, it stands for Regional Center of Excellence in education for sustainable development. It works on uh, a few, uh, several things um, on the uh, front of uh, SDG. And uh, some of you may know that SDG is the, um, is the forefront and, uh, of the United Nations now in terms of championing uh, and uh, bringing forth the agenda of uh, climate change, the environment, including education, equity of education between uh, for, for those that are less fortunate and so on and so on. There are a total of 70 goals of uh, SDGs. Why I'm sharing this is that later on, I will bring you on to the purpose of the special issue that Dr. Hiram has mentioned in bridging the world of researcher and practitioner. So in RCE Kuching, there are many practitioners uh, for um, agenda of uh, SDG and uh, we work on uh, bridging the community and with the use of a university as a platform. RCE Regional Center of Excellence of Education in SDG is a global uh, organization. It is under the um, United Nations University which has the headquarters in Tokyo, Japan to sustain and bring forward the SDG uh, goals of the United Nations. And UN, UNU, United Nations University, believe that university is the best platform for us to bring this SDG goals and responsibility to the communities. And um, in RCE coaching, that's what we are uh, working at. Uh, on on uh, RCE Kuching yeah, um, for, for this. So I just want to show you um, a bit of this. Okay. Um, so on this, uh, this is our Facebook of RCE Kuching. You can see that um, we work with our students. These are our students who last year has been in um, doing the river art competition. We held a river art competition in Kuching so that the secondary school children, primary school children and the public can uh, participate with their artwork, with their um, uh, painting uh, in terms of uh, looking at how to keep the river healthy and so on. Right, okay, so sorry, this is Dr. our Yong, students. Uh, yes. Sorry to interrupt, uh, I don't yes. think we are seeing the Facebook. Oh, you're not seeing, uh, you're seeing? Yeah, we are seeing the, the, the dashboard of... Okay. Uh, yeah. 
Okay. Sorry me, about that. Me. Okay. Never mind. Uh, I'll go back to to here. Um, okay. Right. So um, so uh, we we work with uh, the youth, our students, and also the uh, community on that. There are three focus areas uh, that RCE Kuching work on, which is the river conservation, uh, sustained communities development, and ecotourism. And uh, we have several SDG that we work on, including quality education, water sanitation, responsible production and consumption, life below water, life on land. Particularly for this special issue of British Food Journal, um, we are focusing on, for example, responsible con production and consumption, looking at uh, reducing food waste. And then we have the life below water to look at how uh, we can sustain the ocean ecosystem. Uh, with the special issue now, we are already accepting um, uh, manuscript. And there's a manuscript now sent in about consumption of fish in Turkey. So very interesting, yeah. Okay, Dr. then Yong, um, yes. Sorry, Dr. Young. Um, yes. Slide, uh, are you showing the slide on uh, the special issue? We uh, are, yes. We are, seeing, we are seeing something else. Um, oh, okay. Let me. Maybe, uh, mm, maybe okay. you would like to stop share and share stop again. Stop share and then share again. Uh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me. Okay. Okay, maybe I share my desktop instead. Okay. Um, still an empty. Oh, uh, yep. Okay. All right. Yep. Thank yeah. you. Sorry. Okay. So mm, now going back to the SDG. So just uh, talking about some of the SDG we are having at uh, RCE Kuching, which maybe will help uh, some of the researcher here in terms of ideas of uh, writing. If you are working along that line. Uh, we are looking at reducing food waste, which Dr. Hyrum mentioned just now what you do with all those food yeah, uh, that you have, uh, you cannot finish and so on. Uh, so in RCE Kuching, we do several things. Uh, we make it into compost. We collect that. Uh, we have a hotel also next to our university in Kuching. We collect the waste, make it into compost and make it into fertilizer and things like that. Yeah. So, but what we need in research on this is that we need people to write it to report it so that that bring awareness to others uh, in terms of the um, uh, research. Yeah? And uh, SD, uh, for the British Food Journal on this uh, special issue of, uh, with the title of the future of food, responsible con production, acquisition, consumption and disposition. Here, just by the title, this special title, uh, special issue title itself, you can see it involves multidiscipline. For example, if we are looking at responsible production, it can be from a viewpoint of a food scientist. It can be a viewpoint of a company. For example, some of the big company now looking at their packaging uh, on how to use biodegradable, biodegradable materials or even how to sell to consumer without the bottles. The consumer will bring the bottles, fill it up and you know. So those are part of responsible production that we are talking about. So in this special issue, the focus of uh, is on research, yes, is on practice because we want to hear a lot from practitioners and it's also about for those who are doing policy on this, we also would very much like to welcome uh, papers on policies. Yeah. And uh, as Dr. Hiram has mentioned, there are two things when we are looking at a special issue. We are talking about research in practice. We also wanting to promote practice as research. So for those of you out there who is practicing SDG in your daily life or in your university or uh, in your community, you have a project with community, please write it out and send to us because we would very much like to see how you uh, advocate uh, issue on food, whether it's food security, nutrition, and so on, uh, or even businesses uh, on logistics and so on uh, into in your research. Yeah? So uh, example of a practice as research, you can have your practice as part of a methodology 
and you may have a um, topic, for example, like um, diet or nutrients practice um, in the indigenous people, for example, and how those indigenous people practice this uh, in a traditional natural way. And how is that related to food security, for example, if you are doing a long life, you can report it yeah, uh, as a conceptual paper or cross-sectional studies or something like that. yeah. And uh, also other things like, for example, uh, in this COVID-19 pandemic, many people are ordering food catering, right? In food catering, the bad news about it is that it uses a lot of plastic and single-use plastic. They, uh, no, I suppose that they have no choice uh, to do that, but where does this go? So the, the question is that does the COVID-19 pandemic also threatening the environment? also threatening SDG and what can we do about it for, with all these uh, plastic waste or food waste in this uh, pandemic. So please uh, write, write about them. And uh, for practitioner like uh, people who is doing groundwork uh, on, uh, for SDG, for the practitioner, we also were very much wanting to know about research, what the researchers are doing so that we can incorporate evidence-based practice into um, our, our practice or the daily thing that, that we are doing. Example, um, we wanting to know how can we uh, balance uh, the SDG number two, zero hunger, how can we balance the, uh, advocate the objective of that with biodiversity uh, and in terms of uh, increasing the uh, staple food, the, the types of uh, plants that we have uh, and increasing a biodiversity to ensure food security also. And very much also we would like, you know, if uh, engineers are hearing, I know that um, your university, uh, University of Newcastle also have a faculty of engineering. So if you have engineers there, if you are doing innovation of uh, the food system, how can we learn from your research so that we incorporate uh, the studies, the methods you have, the result you have incorporate and help our local farmers in Kuching, for example, or in Malaysia. Or in, so how can we use all this? So the paper that you send will be of value, will be uh, to the practitioner out there. Yeah. So that is what we want to um, uh, promote uh, today. And, and the other thing I want to share with researcher here um, is that uh, in addition to what Dr. Hiram and Dr. Tan has mentioned, uh, several points as the guest editor now that I, we are receiving some of the manuscript. First important point when we receive manuscript is that uh, we see whether the manuscript meet the objective of the special issue. Uh, so before you send into any journal, I will propose that you read carefully what is the scope, what is the objective of that journal. So sometimes, you know, no matter how good the writing is or the idea is, if it's not in the scope of the journal, uh, we unfortunately, we just have to, we, we, we have to reject because it's not within that scope. Yeah. And all this thing, uh, the good news is that it's all on internet, it's all in the, in the journal website. You can read about it carefully. And I would want to offer, uh, if you are not sure uh, whether uh, the paper that you write is within the scope, please send an email to the guest editor. You can, if you are interested in British Food Journal, you just want to make sure that your paper is within uh, our objective or within the scope of this special issue. Please send me an email and ask me and I can just look at it quickly and tell you, yes, you can submit or no, or, or, or maybe you need to modify, for example. So uh, at any time, I think you can always write to the editor, you know, to make sure the scope is there before you send in. Because sometimes you may not want to waste your time uh, to thinking about it. So first thing, find the right journal or for, for your content, knowing the scope of the, um, uh, the paper, and you may have other consider, uh, consideration in, if you are funded by a funder, they may want you to submit your manuscript to certain quart, uh, no, uh, quartile of a journal. They may want you to send it to Q1 journal, Q2 journal, and so on. So you may want to check on that. Uh, the third thing very important is that for researcher who doesn't have funding, you may want to know whether the journal has a publication fees, isn't it? Uh, and uh, this special issue, British Food Journal, is a hybrid journal. Hybrid meaning that 
you have a choice uh, between publication fees. If you pay a publication fee, you get your uh, manuscript open access, meaning that uh, everyone can access it and read it. If you opt not to pay the publication fee for the open access, then uh, they will publish it in the traditional way. People will need to subscribe to the journal to read the manuscript and so on. Yeah. So the goodness is that it, in, in in other words, is free if uh, if you do not have a funders to pay your publication fees. Yeah. And the other thing I want to share with a researcher in terms of from the viewpoint of an editor is that um, it's very important that you follow closely the format. Uh, that is uh, needed by the journal because uh, formatting is the uh, first thing per perhaps uh, you would want to see to format that and uh, there are actually technology out there you can use for example you can use uh, Mendeley uh, referencing um, to just quickly change your reference format to suit that particular journal yeah and um, the other thing I want to mention, I see that uh, many of us are from the ASEAN region, India, Indonesia, and so on. Um, many of time, uh, this journal, they ask about language. So a lot of time we are afraid to uh, publish because uh, uh, we, we feel that we are not so uh, uh, fluent in English, we are not so good in writing in English, and so on. Um, but do not let that deter you to write your ideas. Yeah, there are many uh, editing services and uh, things like that to help you. And if you are in a university, the goodness of that is that you have people like Dr. Hiram, who is a seasoned publisher and all professors and so on uh, at your university. They can help you to edit and read through your, your manuscript. But uh, if you are worried about language, please do send it to people who can read it and edit it for you before you send it to the, uh, the, the journal, yeah? So uh, for British Food Journal, I just want to mention many of you probably perhaps is from the business school. British Food Journal is a Q1 paper in the area of uh, business management and accounting. And uh, it is a Q2 in the area of food science uh, category. So it will be a very good opportunity for those of you who work on food, uh, SDG and so on uh, to send in your manuscript. Yeah. So uh, if you have any question, you can ask. Um, thank you. Yes, I think now we are back to Dr. Tan. Yep, I'm back. <laughs> yep, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you, Dr. Yong. I think um, it was really, really good sharing from the perspective of the guest editor. So those that wanted to send your manuscript to British Food Journal for this special issue, you know who to write to. Okay, you also see the face. Huh? Just, just say that I attended the session, I want to send, can or not. Huh? Then she'll reply to you. Okay, so we have a couple of questions that actually came in. In fact, a lot of questions, but we also um, keeping track of the time. So um, we will be spending another 10 minutes or so to answer the questions. Um, then thereafter, we would like to have your views on the survey. So I think we have a question over here, which I would like to actually ask um, Dr. Hiram to, to answer. So the question goes like that. So it says that, in fact, you know, there appears to be a big gap between the need for publishing in high impact journals versus publishing for impact. So what does this person mean? It means that, uh, sometimes when we publish papers, we always go for all those impact factor 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 versus publishing in media or outlets that have bigger impact to the community like in the newspapers or in the uh, practitioner journal. So I think there is this gap or dilemma and this person wants to know how do we actually bridge this gap. So Dr. Hyrum, what would be your view? Okay, thank you, Dr. Tan, for the question and also the question from the participant. Um, I, I have two responses. Number one, uh, as an academic uh, person, it is also in, it is also good to publish our papers in uh, in non-academic materials. Uh, so, so on one hand, yes, we need to take care of our uh, academic you know achievement. We publish papers in. Uh, journals which are indexed with impact factor uh, 
But again, at the same time, it is, it is good to also write and publish papers in non-academic uh, materials. Uh, I begin to do that. Um, I, I don't see any uh, reason to not doing that. And again, it's all part of learning, uh, making uh, knowledge uh, relevant also to the practitioner side. Uh, the second response is that uh, whatever you, you write, uh, yes, you are aiming for uh, a high impact factor journal. Um, it's, 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 it's about yourself. What is the motive? What is the reason for you to, to write this paper? Because there are, there are many ways to, uh, shall I say, manufacture papers. Uh, there are many online tools for you to uh, paraphrase things, to come up with second, third, fourth papers using the same data without, with less effort. I'm not going to go into details. What I'm trying to point out is put your passion in. Put your passion in. Uh, because when, when you do that, um, even though it is an academic exercise, uh, the practitioners might be interested to read uh, articles like that as well. So I think we have an important role to play uh, to close the gap um, so that whatever knowledge we generate, it is relevant to both sides. Back to you, Dr. Tan. Can't hear you, Dr. Tan. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Hiram. So I think there is, um, and I think you really rightly point out, you know, that when we were to publish, it is also very uh, important that we publish in a, a non-journal outlet. In fact, there is a paper recently being written saying that academics should also try to publish in that outlet as well. And right. then in this regard, um, there is another question that I would actually um, like to ask Dr. Yong from her perspective as a guest editor. So this question actually goes like that. It says that if I only have secondary data as the only source of data, is it sufficient for publication or must I have primary data? So Dr. Yong, from your um, experience as a guest editor, how would you actually uh, advise this uh, friend of ours? Okay, I think um, any data is valuable. That is the uh, important thing. Um, it depends on how you, what is the uh, objective and the aim of that paper. If your aim is about uh, scientific methods and things like that, maybe secondary data uh, may not cut it, you know. But if your aim is a concept paper or um, um, theory paper, perhaps it can support it. So it really depends on the purpose of your paper and what you are trying to bring forth to tell the communities. So to me, any data is valuable. It depends on how you write it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Dr. Ari, do you have anything to add on with regard to this question about primary and secondary? No, Dr. Yu has, has said it well. Okay, thank you. So I think there's another question which I would also um, hope Dr. Haran can answer, which is basically on passion. I think you have amazed the audience about your passion on writing and creating you know, new knowledge. So this person actually was wanting to find out, you know, as academics, even as uh, whether research academics, we tend to lose focus because there are so many distractions and the curiosity diminish. So from your perspective, your own experience, how do you keep that passion growing? How do you keep the fire keep burning inside you and never thought of giving up? <laughs> this is a very subjective question. Uh, I, I, I may not have the answer for, um, for the participant, uh, but very briefly, uh, very briefly in my own experience, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I make sure I don't uh, settle. Uh, I'm not settled. Um, they, they will always be things to learn. Um, and, and you talk to practitioners, you talk to lecturers, you talk to students, um, and you are always, you know, open uh, to learn different things. Um, so I, I guess uh, no matter where you are, where, what profession, I mean, where you work, uh, yes, y there are things that you have to do routinely every day, every day, 
uh, but try to create uh, some space uh, to do something else. Uh, you know, sometimes I like to go to coffee shop uh, to reflect, to, uh, to think about things that I went through today. Uh, and, 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 and sometimes I uh, work with my students uh, instead of giving them you know, assignment topics in a routine way, can I come up with something different? Um, it is something subjective. It is something incremental. Uh, um, so, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, so I guess as long as you are not settled, uh, you, are, you, you are always open to suggestion, learning, um, talking to different people. Um, that's, I think that's how you, you build your curiosity over, over time. Um, yep. Back to you, Toto Tan. Thank you. Yeah, Toto Yo, you have anything to add to this question? How do you keep your passion burning, especially in the SDG area? Okay. Um, maybe I should share from a perspective because uh, I was the uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academic and Research before at the university, before I chose to uh, go back to research just last year uh, on that. Um, now, uh, I saw some of these questions from um, um, this session um, about keeping your passion I think a very important point is that you must work in a team um, I have pharmacy students now they uh, they just graduated a group of them work with me closely they asked me hey Dr. Yong uh, should I go and do a, a, a master after this or should I just go into practice and I told them that it is a very serious question because uh, you need to think through actually what you need. Um, so in terms of a passion, it, you know, when we choose a PhD area, it is an area that we have chosen because we're interested and it also bring impact into our career later. This is a field that we, we, we wanted to go into. So we have to think about it uh, carefully. But uh, so when I was a DVC, I see many of my uh, staff, my lecturers, um, they are all very good in terms of, for example, practicing uh, things. They are very good in teaching. But when I ask them to write about their experience, they are very reluctant to do it. And as some of you say that it may be because of the environment. Because when you are in a situation where you don't have a group of colleagues or teams who are wanting to work on this or everyone is just busy about teaching, you have too many students, you need to do this, you know, uh, then you may not have it. So what we did in, at that time was that we set a day of the week or, or you know, we, we have a group, we set a, a group of people say, okay, these are our support group. We have senior staff, we have junior staff, mid-level staff together in the faculty, in the area, similar area that they're working on, and we share. And we will sit down sometimes in a week to say, okay, come up with ideas, uh, uh, talk about challenges of writing and so on. And because of that group uh, working together and in the uh, thing related to SDG, um, because I started off also a group on uh, water quality and so on with the engineers and pharmacists. I'm more concerned about you throwing drugs in the water and then you drink it later. Because many of the drugs is not filtered, you know, by a water treatment center. So you, you, you drink drugs every day, actually. Very minor amount, but it may cause harm. But, so I'm interested from that viewpoint. But the engineers are more interested on, you know, hey, Dr. Young, you say about this drug. Can you tell me about the drugs? How, how is it? Uh, what is the property? Can we remove in the waste system, uh, wastewater system? And they explain to me what is wastewater system. So when, when you, you have to get a group, as Dr. Hiram also just now has mentioned, um, Dr. Tan has worked with him together, uh, get the group together. Yeah. And that will continue your passion. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Young, for sharing. So I think it looks like we've run out of time. There's a lot more questions we could answer, but I think I'm quite mindful of that. So I think really we have uh, got to thanks again um, Newcastle, Newcastle, Newcastle Singapore for, for hosting this session, for organizing this session, and Dr. Iram and um, Dr. Yong for actually sharing your expertise. 
So um, to conclude this session, uh, I would like to invite um, Dr. Kavita, who is the um, academic director, to say a few words. Thank you, Dr. Tang. And thanks to all of you for attending this session to begin with. And I would also like to thank Dr. Haram and Dr. Yong and Dr. Tan as well for moderating the session so effectively. And I trust many of the attendees. I, from the questions, I can understand that many of the attendees are students as well. And I trust they will all start writing very soon. And uh, there are quite a lot of people who are al already in the midst of writing and they are still going to proceed further to write more papers before they can even graduate with their PhDs. I'm sure they're all going to become early, early uh, writers or authors, which is really going to help them in their career. Thank you so much for all your uh, talk and your motivating uh, speech. And now I would also like to thank all the participants, especially from so many countries, India, Ghana, Philippines, Pakistan, Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, Dubai, and Algeria, special mention 4 a.m. in the morning. Thank you so much for waking up so early and coming online to attend this session. And uh, to bring uh, closing remarks from Henry Ford's words, as Dr. Hiram had pointed out in his slide, we have come together today, which is the beginning. We should keep together so that we progress. And finally, we should also work together to achieve success. Thank you so much, all of you. Good luck to all of you as well. Yep, over to you, Dr. Tan. Thank you. And thank you so much. So um, before all of you leave this room, we need your feedback. And uh, because this is going to be a series of research seminars, it will not be a one-off affair. And uh, University of Newcastle would like to maintain this connection with everybody in this room. So do um, take five minutes of your time, uh, scan the QR code with your mobile devices, complete the survey, and that will also help them to issue the e-certificate to you. And once you've done that, thank you very much again, and have a fantastic day ahead and a good weekend.